Software plays a critical role in allowing telematics to work with the user's remote monitoring application. We're going to explain the process that enables a generator set to send data to a telematics device so users can access and use it. The generator set controller contains all of the functions that are necessary to protect and control the asset. It also holds data about the asset's operation and performance. Each controller might speak a different language. To overcome this barrier, a configuration file is plugged into the telematics hardware on the equipment. The config file uses code protocols to translate the controller's data into parameters, like engine oil pressure, and faults, like emergency stop. The parameters and faults are expressed in a language that the user's remote monitoring application can understand. The telematics device sends the decoded parameters and faults to the remote monitoring user interface. The remote monitoring user interface pulls the parameters and faults from the telematics device. Application users can gain actionable insights from the data. Let's take a closer look at step two of this process, where the config file takes data from the controller and translates it into parameters and faults that the remote monitoring application can understand. This is a very important step. Without the config file, it's not possible to get asset data from the controller. And without a config file that's coded to work with the controller, the data may not be usable. CAT generator sets might use a CAT controller or they might use a non-CAT controller. For CAT controllers, implementation is simple. The parameters and faults are readily available and standard reusable config files exist, so no translation is needed. For non-CAT controllers that use a standard communication method called J1939, CAN, implementation is also simple. In this case, the controller and remote monitoring application mostly speak the same language. There are just some variations that need to be accounted for. But for non-CAT controllers that don't use the standard communication method, implementation is time-consuming and much more difficult. Additional steps must be added to the implementation process. Here's why. The configuration file must be customized. Non-CAT controllers with unique protocols format and store data differently, depending on the controller's brand, model, firmware, etc. Because of this variation, the standard config file won't work so a customized config file to decode controller's data must be built from scratch. But information about the controller's data sets isn't always available. Some companies that sell controllers make it difficult to find and decode their data sets because they want customers to use their service instead of coming to Caterpillar. So before we can do anything else, we need to translate and document the controller's non-standard language. Then we must do a lot of manual testing and analytics to figure out which data set relates to the parameters and faults CAT systems use. All of this makes it more difficult to create the customized config file. Finally, Caterpillar code that references the controller's data can't be reused as is. Because data is stored differently in the controller, any standard or custom calculations that are used to turn that data into higher level indicators, like operating status, must be rewritten or adjusted. Together, these hurdles mean that implementation for non-CAT controllers takes more time and effort.